Let's look at viewport navigation or moving around in the 3D scene. We'll accomplish that from the icons in the lower right corner of the screen here. And later we'll learn how to navigate using keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys. For an effective demonstration of viewport navigation, we should have an object in the scene. Let's create a default 3ds Max plant. Go to the Create panel, and from the Create panel, we'll create a plant. We have a bunch of icons down here for different object types. We want the geometry type to be active, and below that is a pull-down list that currently reads standard primitives. From that pull-down list, choose AEC Extended, which stands for Architecture, Engineering, and Construction. And in the object type area here, we can click on foliage to create a plant. In the favorite plants rollout down here, we can scroll down and let's find society garlic. Click that to select it. And then move your mouse over to the perspective panel and click once near the origin. And that society garlic plant is created. Right click to exit creation mode. And if you left click, you'll deselect the object. Notice that when the object is deselected, its level of detail is degraded. And now we're looking at something called canopy mode. So that we can see what we're doing, let's disable that canopy mode. Choose the select object tool from the main toolbar and select the object by clicking on it. Then go to the modify panel on the command panel and scroll down a little bit and you'll see level of detail. Okay, that's already at high. And we'll see viewport canopy mode is set to when not selected. Well, let's switch that over to never. And then click in the viewport to deselect the object. And now the plant is not being degraded in its level of detail. The first thing we want to do is get closer to the object. And that's done with the so-called zoom command. And that is the magnifier glass. Click on that magnifier glass and click and drag up and down in any viewport. Notice that you get a little green circle and that's the point that you're going to dolly forward to. This is technically a dolly. The camera is moving forward and back. It's not actually a zoom. A zoom is changing the focal length optically and the camera remaining in the same place. So that is a bit of a misnomer. This is actually a dolly. And we can dolly forward and back in any view. We can go back to our select object tool and deselect. Go back to our magnifier glass or zoom and zoom in. All right, so that's zoom, pretty simple. We can move the camera up and down and left to right using the hand icon. And that is also kind of inaccurately named. It's labeled pan view. When I click on that hand, and drag left to right, I'm positioning the camera left to right. And if I drag up and down, I'm positioning the camera up and down. It's not a pan. Pan is a panorama in which the camera remains positioned in one location and rotates left to right in order to take in different parts of the scene. So this is really actually tracking left to right and pedestal up and down in any of the views. And finally, the other most important viewport navigation tool is called Orbit. It's also known as Arc Rotate, or in other programs, it's known as Tumble. And it's down here, and it looks like a little planet with an orbit around it. So click on that, and then click in the perspective view, and we see a yellow circle. If we click and drag inside that yellow circle, we can tumble or orbit around the selected object. And if nothing is selected, we'll just tumble around the center of the world or the origin. If we click and drag on the outside of that yellow circle, then what we'll get is something called a canted angle, also known as a Dutch tilt. And that's something that you don't want to happen accidentally. You only want a canted angle intentionally, not accidentally like this. So we can get back to our previous framing in numerous ways, the most obvious and intuitive thing to do would be simply undo. Okay, well, let's try that. We've got an undo button up here. Click on that undo. And notice what happened. The viewport navigation command 
didn't change. We didn't go back to a level horizon line. Huh, okay, well, I'll undo a couple more times. And if I undo two or three times, finally, I'll get back to this state before I enabled that setting for the canopy so that the canopy would never be displayed. But what is happening here is that this undo button is going back through a series of scene commands. And if I click on redo here, we'll go back to the viewport canopy never being displayed. But the undo buttons in the upper left corner do not affect viewport navigation. Undo affects scene commands, such as moving an object or changing its parameters. To undo a viewport navigation command, you'll need to go into the menus within each viewport and click on the name of the viewport. In this case, it's the perspective view. And from that menu, we have the ability to undo. And it currently says undo view rotate, but that will change depending upon the command you executed. So I'll click on that and I'm restored back to a level horizon line. Now, as we saw, there is a keyboard shortcut for that, which is Shift Z. So let's just look at the keyboard shortcuts really quickly. If we, for example, dolly back with the zoom tool and then issue the command Shift Z, we'll be restored back to the initial position of our viewport. And we can also undo scene commands using the undo buttons here or the keyboard shortcut for that, which is control Z. So just to illustrate here, if I go up here and change the height using one of these spinners, I can click and hold the mouse and drag that around. And I'm changing a scene parameter. And to undo that, I can use the undo button or I can use the keyboard shortcut, which is control Z. And now it's been restored back to a height of 18 inches. And that's how we can use viewport navigation controls. And it also illustrates the difference between scene undo and viewport undo.